Hi everyone, I'm back. For some reason I'm getting a lot of shadows this morning, but we will just have to work with that. Um, I can't get more lamps, as you know at the moment, so, so I am using the Ornate Style, ornate style and Ornate Thank stamp set. Now you can use let me get that straight. You can use different ones if you want because all you're gonna need are some words and then I'm just using that single flower and there are some other stamp sets that have flowers. You could even use the uh, bigger flower, I suppose, and just get sort of a partial image and that's fine. And then you'll need an embossing folder and Memento Black Ink, white embossing powder, and then various blends. I'll go over the blends um, in a little bit. So let's get started. First, I'm going to show you our finished project. So this one is inspired by Tammy Wilson, who's one of the artisan team members. And I did change it up a little bit, but I just thought her, her layout, her st the style of the card was quite nice and it's not too hard. So basically we've got an A5 piece of Whisper White cardstock or your basic card base because I know we have one person on here from the US so you just use whatever use whatever your size is I don't even remember anymore then um, then you need to have two pieces of one of crumb cake and one of whisper white so you can use the very largest frame out of the ornate layers dies or you can use the very largest frame from the stitched rectangles dies or you can just cut a rectangle it doesn't have to have the edges on it it is nice but it doesn't have to or you can just mix them up so you can see on this one I used two of the ornate frames and on this one I thought well I'll try one of each and just see you know see what that looks like so on this white one we want to emboss it and I've lost the embossing folder already Okay, so I'm gonna use the Ornate Flowers. I really like this one. It looks like, um, it sort of reminds me of like the walls when I was a kid for some reason, like that texture or something, I'm not sure. But it's really nice, I like it. Okay. All right, so for those of you who don't have it, hopefully you can see that and get it in the light. Yeah, this video feels a little dark for some reason. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and put some adhesive. Now, I'm just putting glue on the center of it because I'm gonna put this on just a little bit, um, just a little bit askew. I guess is the word, but I'm not gonna put it on my card base just, just yet. Now, if you don't like that sort of look, um, then you can just cut a crumb cake piece that's just a little bit bigger than your white rectangle and just go from there. Then let's do our, our three flowers. Now, for this, I've used the very smallest stitched rectangle, but if you don't have this, then you can just cut some rectangles one and a quarter by one and three quarter inches. And then we're gonna stamp the little flower. Now this is something that Tammy Wilson did with her card, that, something that I never thought of. She's inked it up in Memento Black. Oh, sorry, I'm off camera. So inked it up in Memento Black. And then she's actually stamped it off and then stamped on. I've never thought to stamp off black ink before. I guess it just, the reason why, it just makes it maybe less harsh. And maybe then as you're coloring with the Memento, I'm sorry, with the Stampin' Blends, then uh, the black ink Maybe it, if it ever did bleed, it's just less chance of bleeding, but it's, it's a little less stark as well. Now, I went ahead and colored two of the flowers already because it takes a little bit of, a, a little bit of time. So I'll just explain with this one, with this flower, I use the Bermuda Bay and the Pool Party. With this one, I used, sorry, Poppy Parade and Flirty Flamingo. 
Now, of course, you don't have to use four different colors. You can use two um, if that's what you have, and you don't have to use these colors either. This is why I chose this project because you can do those in any colors that you like. And then on this third one that I'm going to do with you, I've got Calypso Coral and Petal Pink. Then for the leaves, I've got Granny Apple Green and Soft Sea Foam. And then the center of the flower, there's the two crumb cakes, and then I used a little bit of the ivory. But like I said, you don't have to use this many because it is quite a few. Remember, this is an artisan who did this, so... Um, their work is usually quite detailed. So I'll just explain what I'm doing and I'm just gonna do the one, obviously. So I've got the dark crumb cake and I'm going to just outline that um, flower center. And then I have the light crumb cake. Now, some of you may be totally better with blends than I am, so don't judge. Um, then I'm just going to take the light crumb cake and go over the dark crumb cake until you can't see a harsh line between them, but I've also left a little bit of white space there. Okay, and then I'll take the ivory and just go over the whole thing. It's quite nice to go over the whole thing once you're done with a lighter color and then just make sure all the colors are blended and you can't see any lines um, between the colors. Then I'm gonna do basically the same thing with the, this is the dark granny apple green. I'm just gonna outline those veins. The light granny, granny apple green, I'll do the stem. And then just maybe go over those dark veins just a little bit with the light granny apple green. And then I probably won't use the light sea foam with the dark soft sea foam, just go over the whole thing. Okay. All right, then with our flower, I'll take the dark Calypso Coral and just go through the center of the flower here. Like so, and then you've got a few petals that are sort of asymmetrical there. So I've added a little bit of a dark there, and this is the light. Calypso coral. I don't know if you just heard that big noise. My husband's cleaning the bathroom and he's obviously moving the shelving. So I'm not gonna complain. He's cleaning the bathroom. Okay. And then we'll take the dark petal pink. Now petal pink is quite significantly lighter than Calypso Coral. So you'll need to do some more layers with this, as in keep going and going and going to get the colors to blend. You can see why I did the other two already. Okay. And then if you want to, I've left just a few of these tips of the longer flowers. You can go back with the very light petal pink, which is very, very light color. Okay, so that's how that's turned out. Hopefully you can see that. I can't really see exactly what you can see. Okay, then if you want to, I've taken my scissors and just roughed up those edges. Now, some of you may not like this and that's totally fine, just don't do it. But even if you haven't colored all your flowers yet, you can um, still do this. Because you can, you can actually put the whole card together and then color after. Okay. Now, um, Tammy had these up on dimensionals. I decided I didn't, I don't really like putting up things on dimensionals when it's just one layer. That's just my personal preference. So what I did instead was kind of just bent up the edges 
and then I'll just show you something. Um, and then I just put the adhesive only in the middle. Hopefully you can see that. I can't quite see the screen, like I said. And then you're just gonna place that. I find I like to put the two outer ones first, kind of eyeball it like that. So you see by bending up the corners and then just putting adhesive in the middle, there is some still some texture to it, like it still looks like it's not just flat on the card, but I don't have dimensionals. And then if you do these two first and then put the center one in, you just kind of center that between them. Then that, that way you get them so they're all looking fairly lined up in theory. Okay, then the next thing we'll do is put on our twine. Actually, I think I'll do the words next, sorry. Then you just need a piece of scrap black. Use your emboss buddy. Versamark, and I'm choosing the You're Amazing because I thought that's perfect for if you wanna send it to um, someone that you work with, like a team member, or if you wanted to send it to, for someone's birthday or a thank you, it's just appropriate or like fitting for many occasions. And then some white powder. And then we'll use our heat tool. White embossing on black is just so cool. There's my Stampin' Up! scissors. Okay. Then I'm just going to use my scissors to cut those out. Now you can fussy cut more detailed around the words. I quite like that imperfect rectangle look. But either one's going to look fine or great. Actually, not fine, great. Then I'm gonna use my black dimensionals. Maybe, if I can get them off. Put those on the back. And then go ahead and put that where you want it, like so. Cool, I love that. And then, now we'll do our twine. So where'd my tape go? So with the twine, I'm just going to adhere it onto the back here. Now because I have these on a little bit skew if it was a little bit of a brain teaser to get it on, to get the twine on straight, I'm just gonna wrap it around three times. You can do more, you can do less. Tape that on the end, like so. And then I'm just gonna do a little, a little bow. It's so quiet. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna call that good enough for the minute. I might fiddle with that a little more. There we go, that's better. Okay, I'm gonna fiddle with it more now. Okay, you can always use a glue dot if you need to get it to behave a little bit more later, which I will. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did to these flowers to this card base. I'm just gonna kind of gently move up those corners a little bit. And then I'm just going to adhere it with glue across the back. And now I'm going to place it so that the white piece is actually straight on the card front. And the it's the um, crumb cake piece that's a little bit off center. And if it hangs off the card just a little bit, it will still fit in the envelope. So don't stress about that if you've done that. Okay, it's gonna bug me. I gotta do it now. 
use a little glue dot and use your pick tool don't use your scissors and then yeah that's better now it's behaving then i'm just going to add a few sequins so the best way to add sequins in my opinion is to put the glue on the project and there and there and then you can choose sequins from the woven threads assortment which I actually love these so much they're so beautiful and then there's also the what's that one called just the iridescent sequins and that so you can mix and match or just choose something that that works and then use your take your pick tool the little gummy end to pick those up um, It's finding then what you're looking for. Okay, there, and then let's get a big, big pink one. We'll do a light pink this, on this one. Okay, there we go. All right, move those before I spill them. And then inside the card, you can just stamp. Well, you can stamp whatever you want, to be honest, but I just stamped that little flower and then I grabbed the thanks. If you want this as a thank you card, you can do, of course, happy birthday or something else, but that's what I did. So if you do something nice for me, you might get this in the mail. All right, so that's our project. And then, of course, stamp your envelope as well. So I hope you enjoy making that and feel free, like I said, to... You know, use this image, use the big image and just get portions of it or this image or, or grab a different stamp set and see what you come up with. All right, guys, I'll sign off for now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.